My name is Heidi Royce Lamke, and this is Butters. <coughs> your OVRS surgeon worked very hard to ensure that your dog has a successful outcome, but that will ultimately depend on what you do at home. Right, Butters? Let's start with the Elizabethan collar, also known as the cone of shame. Here you see two dogs wearing an Elizabethan collar. Can you tell me which one is too short? Which one do you think is too long? A properly fitted e-collar should extend to past the end of the nose, even when it's pushed all the way back down on the neck. So the dog on the right's e-collar could be considered too short, while the dog on the left could be considered too long. However, if your dog falls in between two different sizes, we will opt to choose the larger size. So this is how to put together an Elizabethan collar. You'll find it has a smooth side and a rough side. In general, we try to put the smooth side to cone inward as it's easier to clean should the dog drool or get a soil on it. You're just gonna go ahead and line up the two tabs and put them into the matching slots for the top and bottom. The larger e-collars will have even more tabs. And then you're gonna just fold these loops into place. And this is gonna be what you loop either your collar through or your tie through to help ensure the e-collar does not become dislodged while your dog is wearing it. To make sure the Elizabethan collar stays on, you do need to loop either a string, gauze, or the dog's collar in order to help make sure that the dog doesn't get it off. And now we're ready to put it on. So I'd like to demonstrate how to place an e-collar on your dog using positive reinforcement. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the dog's favorite treat and we're gonna put it through the opening and slowly pull it through until he gets his head all the way in there. You might have to work their ears through the opening and then you're gonna go ahead, once it's on, give them the treat, let them have it, and then tie it on. So you're gonna wanna make the e-collar tight enough so that it doesn't come off easily. To ensure it's on tight enough, I give it a little tug because if he's able to slip his head out of it easily, and then you're gonna put it back on, he's gonna try 10 times as hard to get it off the second time. So make sure it is securely fastened the first time he wears it. And this is a good fit. It does have to extend all the way to the end of his nose. If he can get his nose around the edge of that, that means he might be able to lick that incision. And you wouldn't wanna do that, right, Butters? Right, good dog. Butters, would you like to help me demonstrate the lick sleeve? No, not that kind of licking. It needs to go on your leg. Oh, that's right, you don't have legs. This would be a better job for Toast. Toast is gonna help me show you how to inspect your dog's surgery incision every day if you were sent home with a lick sleeve. The lick sleeve is labeled for both left and right leg. This is the left side as demonstrated by the L here. It turns inside out to accommodate the right leg as well. To check that incision site, what you're gonna do is you're gonna unbuckle your lick sleeve and then it wraps around the belly two times. So we're just gonna unwrap it there and we're gonna very gently roll it down so that we can expose that incision site. At this time, you may wanna take another picture to ensure that healing is progressing well since the incision is on the inside, it may be easier for you to inspect that incision by peeking under the dog's belly like this. Once you've inspected the incision site, very gently raise the lick sleeve back up, taking the wide part of your lick sleeve band around under the belly, and then you're gonna go up over your dog's back and you're gonna go ahead and wrap that strap around one more time and then gently fasten it together. And you're gonna wanna do this every single day for at least the first two weeks so that we can monitor the incision. 
We worry about out of sight, out of mind, and something could be going bad in there, and if you don't check it, you wouldn't know. So my friend Toast is going to demonstrate how to apply a roughwear harness. When you look at the roughwear harness, you'll see there's a large handle on the top and a little picture of a dog that will go over the dog's head. So to put it on, what you're going to do is you're going to need to undo all four of the buckles, uh, two located on either side of the leash attachment and two on the back part. Then what you're going to do is just go ahead and put that right over your dog's head. Again, make sure that someone is up at the front of the dog giving treats and holding them still and giving lots of praise. So this can be a positive association. And then we're going to go ahead and take the bottom part and just line back up those buckles. So you can see we're going to do the first set along that silver leash hook. And then we're gonna do the second set that go along the back of the rib cage. And now you have applied your roughwear harness. If you find that it is too loose or too tight in certain areas, you can undo the buckle to make any minor adjustments by adjusting the slack through uh, this buckle here. And then you can go ahead and once you've made your adjustment, go ahead and buckle it back together. And that is how to apply a rough wear harness. Thank you, Toast. Good job. So Toast is going to help me demonstrate to you how to put on a help em up harness. The help em up harnesses are really valuable harnesses for really large dogs that have a TPLO on one or both back legs or may have difficulty getting around anyway due to arthritis or some other medical condition. So you can see there's two components. The chest part has the larger handle while the hip component has a smaller handle and they're attached with this connection strap. We're gonna put it on one section at a time. So we're gonna start with just the chest portion. For that, there are a couple of buckles. You can go ahead and we're just gonna unclip each one of those. And then we're gonna slide that right over Toe's head. And again, make sure that your dog is comfortable during this procedure. You may have someone else distracting him with a treat at the front end to make sure that he stands still and is not uncomfortable during this process. Then you're gonna take the T component of the harness and it's going right underneath the chest 
And then we're going to go ahead and buckle each side into the matching part. And so now we have applied the chest portion. We're going to have toes move a little bit forward so we can get a better look at the hip component. Now the hip component is attached with the connector strap and what we're going to do is unhook each buckle that is on the side of this top pad where the handle is so that we can go ahead and carefully thread these two trailing straps right around Toast's booty here. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring that up underneath the belly and we'll go ahead and rebuckle both of those uh, straps to secure that onto my friend Toast here. And the final step would be to hook the connecting strap onto the chest strap. If any minor adjustments need to be made, you should unbuckle the strap first, go ahead and make the adjustment, uh, loosening or tightening, and then re-buckle the strap. The Help em Up harness does loosen with time and may need periodic adjustment. Thank you, Toast, good job.